Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and this is The Groom, and we're doing something just a little bit different today. Typically, all of our reviews, solo and with The Groom, are all spoiler free. However, we thought it would be an interesting switch up to do a spoiler review for the movie Bird Box. So there will be spoilers. If you haven't watched the movie and you want to watch the movie, pause the review, watch the movie, and then resume with us so we can all talk about it. I thought, in particular, this movie would be really interesting to review together because I am blind and he is sighted. What? I know, it's a shock. Blind? So, I thought two different, uh, for the lack of a better word, viewpoints would be really <laughs> interesting to have. I see what you did there. Do you want to give the plot? All right, so this is uh, released December 21st, 2018. Bird Box is a sci-fi horror hybrid drama, kind of all rolled into one, uh, directed by Suzanne Bayer, Bier, something like that. I don't know Close how to enough. pronounce it. Um, it's a really, it's so weird because it starts out with just some crazy chick, Sandra Andrew Bullock, in her apartment painting, Talking to her sister. Her sister brings her groceries because she seems like she's a what's the word for it? Recluse. Thank you. That thing, where she don't want to she don't want to leave, and she makes a joke like, "Why do I have to leave? Because you know you bring me groceries." I didn't notice that she was pregnant at first, so I'll I'll say that right away. I hella didn't, pregnant. I did could not tell that she was like hella hella pregnant, and until like you know she. You know, the sister made the comment about, you know, the OBG and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, and then she like, because she had, she had like a painter's smock on. So it's not me being completely oblivious. I don't recall a painter's smock, but anyways. But, you know, so, you know, it reveals that she's pregnant. You know, she's got to go to see the doctor who is awesome. The doctor is hilarious. So she basically, you know, so she goes to the doctor. Hey, baby, 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 baby stuff. Um, so they're leaving. And in the midst of talking to them, she's like, you know, his, her sister's like, have you seen the news? It's, you know, this crazy thing going around. It's in, like, Europe and Asia right now where people go outside and they're, all of a sudden they're committing suicide for no reason. And there's no explanation behind it. And on the TV you see, like, the little, t the little ticker going across the bottom. You know, European U Union confirms cases in this country and that country and everything. So they get to the hospital, they walk by this blonde woman who you're like, why do they focus so much on, on her as they're walking by? And then you find out. Um, they go through the appointment and they're on their way out and this blonde chick just starts slamming her face against the window. Like, just bashing the shit out of it. Like she's compelled to do so and there's some force like she just, just making like, her do it. And... The thing that you didn't pick up that you asked me about was when she turns back and looks at her room, she got this like weird shit with her eyes. I thought that there was something. They kept doing these tight shots on people's faces. And my first thought was it has to be something with their eyes. It's like a tell, like mm -hmm. you're infected by something. It's showing up somewhere. And I watched this alone the first time and I missed so much stuff because I just can't see it. I can't pick up on it. And that's where I came in. And that's where you came in. I'm like you're seeing eye dog. Mm-hmm. So it's this weird thing happens with it, their eyes, or their eyes become super pig, pig, uh, pigmented, and it's got a bunch of different colors in it, and it kind of looks like the colors all bleed together and run, and it, and it looks like crazy weird. It reminds me of I Am Legend, where they could tell they were infected because of the eyes, but you know that's the only comparison. So her and her sister. She's like, oh my god, it's happening here. They get in the car. The sister, you know, tries to drive away. And they're driving away. And they're like, you know, oh my god, this is crazy. She's like, you're going to go to my house. No, I want to go home. Blah, blah, blah. Um, then it just pans in on the sister who's played by... Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson, thank you, from American Horror Story. And her eyes just shift to the crazy tie-dye shit. And she just starts 
trying to steer into like cars and Sandra Bullock's character is like grabbing the wheel and she's like no no what are you doing what are you doing and they end up like fli- flipping the car and you're like okay Sarah, Sarah Paulson character's dead and then Sandra Bullock climbs out of like you know the car flips over onto it onto the roof and she climbs out I don't know how the baby survived that but that's another story I don't um, get babies I don't know so and then Sandra Bullock's character climbs out and it's Sarah Paulson's character climbs out, and you're like, oh, Sarah Paulson's character's alive. You're like, oh, maybe it's okay. And nope, she steps in front of a garbage truck, and wham, done. So that was that was a shock. I was like, what's going to happen? Is she going to try to... And then, like, you know... I didn't think that was a shock at all. The, the, I saw that shit coming, and I can't truck, see anything. The truck was a shock. I thought she was going to, like... I thought she was going to try to jump into, like, the fire that was near, but no. I knew, It's always a truck or a bus. It was like, the, it reminded me, the truck scene reminded me of the end of Final Destination. I thought you were going to say the end of Mean Girls. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> um, so, the crash ends up, you know, in the middle of the street, and she's like, oh my god, and then she's like, you know, people, like, th- this nice person stops and hel- helps her, and is like, hey, we gotta get you to save, you know, tries to help her, and she falls Comes down. out of a house. And tries no. to help her. Well, the, she falls down again, and people are just pretty much running by her. And these people are trying to run to the house. John Malkovich. Malkovich! Malkovich is in this, and he's wonderful. He's so great in this. And it's his wife tries to come and help uh, help her, and she does this little, like, what? It and, was uh, like, And her Mom. eyes get all freaky, and she's like, Mom? And she just walks into this car that's on fire, and sets down, and the fire just fucking burns her, and freaking crazy and then you know this other guy uh tom we end up finding out his name's tom grabs sandra bullock's character and they run into the house with malkovic and um dr han from law and order svu uh it ends up being his house and it's like you know they it's your standard like you know like don't answer the door everybody's like what the hell's going on they catch on to the fact that it's something visual Yes. So they're pulling all the shades in the house. They hear over the TV that there's a statement from the president saying it's, you know, a national emergency. Don't Mm -hmm. leave your house. You know, all the borders are locked down. Pretty much stay where you are. Try to stay alive. So they do figure out pretty early on, don't look at it. Even Tom, when he's trying to save Mallory, he's like, keep your eyes down. Yeah, and, and he's, like, pulling her into the house. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think at first they thought it was something that if they looked up versus having their eyes open at at, at all, really. But, you know, it's... It kind of... One thing I did... One, one, one thing I think the movie did well is going back and forth. Because it goes back and forth between, you know, when it first started and going forward on that timeline and her and the two kids on the river in the boat yeah the opening scene is her telling them you know stay down don't talk if you hear something on the river or in the forest you need to tell me you can't wander you have to listen to me if you don't listen you're going to die if you don't listen i'm going to hurt you and the kids are just like like they're terrified for good Uh reason and she calls them boy and girl yeah she calls them boy and girl that was like a little foghorn leghorn thing. Yeah. Boy. But it, it you know, and it progresses both storylines uh, well. You, you, know, you see all the people in the house and it kind of like, you know, and it does a good job of giving a little backstory on everybody um, and kind of like, you know, not too much, but kind of like progressing with the she's pregnant. They're all in the house and all of a sudden another pregnant chick shows up, which you know, which, which is crazy. And they led her in and everything like that. And it kind of progresses through like, Hey, this is what we're doing. We're kind of trying to survive. There was a really cool, a really, a really cool moment where you're like, technology is pretty awesome because they take the brand new, it's like a brand new luxury SUV that has proximity alerts and they black out all the windows a la Spike's car and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I thought of that too. <laughs> That's immediately what I thought of. And so they black out all the windows with paint, put up newspaper on them to block everything. And they literally use, and 
I love the how Tom goes back and puts the little piece of tape on the backup camera. Because before this, they find out that if they look at them even through cameras, they still get compelled to kill themselves. Because they tied the one dude to the chair. He looked through the security systems and freaked out, wiggled in his chair just enough to get over to the little stone ledge and... Bang. Yeah. So oh, the reason that they uh, take the car out, one of the people that's in the house with them, Charlie... Who we remember from Get Out as the yes. awesome TSA agent. Oh, I knew that girl was crazy. Yeah. So Love he's, uh, I don't know what position in the grocery store he is, but he has keys. And they're running low on food. They have two pregnant women who obviously need food for their children. And the store's like two blocks away. And the store's two blocks away. So he's kind of like, hey, I have the keys. <laughs> Also, he's writing a novel about the apocalypse, which he has a lot of information about because he's been doing a lot of research to write his book, a la Google, I'm assuming. And I appreciate the accuracy of everything he said. It's yeah. all common folklore, religious, cultural stuff about the apocalypse, the end of the world, everything like, like that, and demons and stuff like that. So I appreciated the accuracy of that. Um, I felt really bad that he was, like, the <laughs> most reluctant to go. He did not <laughs> want to go. I don't want to go. Here are the keys. You can just go without me. I don't blame him. And I'm... he's like, and they're like, how are we going to find anything? He's like, there's, it says it above the aisles. Yeah. It's, it's labeled. It's a grocery <laughs> he's store. He's the most realistic character. Yeah. It's like, fuck that. I'm not going to Yeah. Like, I know a lot of stuff about zombies, but would I want to go out in a zombie apocalypse? Hell, Hell yeah. no. Take a no. machete. I'm going outside. And no. Fucking some people up. I'm not dealing with that shit. You stay inside. I have with enough the cat. problems. Yes, I'll stay inside with the cat. <clears throat> um. So it, they go to the grocery store, and I love this because they use the proximity thing, and he keeps going. That was a curve. No, it wasn't, buddy. It wasn't. A, it was a body. <laughs> yeah, we all know that wasn't a curve. Yeah. So they use the the navigation, and they use the proximity alerts on the car to make it to the gro grocery store, and they get inside the grocery store, and they like pull the blinds down and everything like that. And when they realize how dark it is in there, they're like, you know, one guy peeks up the blindfold. He's like, all right, cool, we're safe. And they get the revelation that I said in that in that moment. Why leave? There's but, tons of food there. Yeah. But, Screw the people you left. Survive. But the moral thing to do is not screw the people that you left there because you said you'd come back and there's exactly. that pregnant lady there. Yeah. Only and one prego said, went. Yeah. And I said, well, why don't you... I was like, well, why don't they just go get the other people? Everybody else stay. One, like, two people go back. Load the rest of the people in. It's better to stay at the grocery store. And then that whole thing gets screwed when we meet Fish Fingers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, before we meet Fish Fingers... Mallory happens upon some birds in a cage, which is a really weird thing to find in a grocery store. I think it, it was more like a because they sold like booze. They had an electronics department. I think it was more like a like a like a Walmart corner store kind of like no yeah kind of like Walmart only like a smaller scale. You know, in like the smaller towns, they have like the corner post store yeah. that has groceries and everything. Mine was Tom. This is where I grew up. I love that place. So Mallory, I miss you being. She's actually, like, a really caring person, and I think she feels guilty that these poor birds are just trapped in a cage. So she puts them in her basket and is, you know, wheeling around with them. And when they hear fish fingers pounding and he's trying to get in, the birds just start going crazy. And that's the first time we figured out that whenever these things are, are around, the birds go nuts. But it's also the first time we figured out that not everybody dies when they're exposed to it. Now, a very important thing that the uh, clerk guy that works from the from the store said is, yeah, he's a little crazy. He was in jail at a psych ward, but he's fine. You know, he, he's nice to me. He like he likes me. And he was like, you know, like, you know, help me, help me, help me. And as soon as they crack open the door, he's like, you got to see it. You need to come out of here and see it. You need to. And they, It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing you'll ever see. And then as soon as they get the door open enough, wham, he, he starts opening the door, trying to get them all to come in. And our reluctant, reluctant hero says, no, oh, shit. And then just runs and tackles him back through the door so they can shut it. And they see a pool of blood underneath and... You realize what's happened. Yeah. Um. So they go through that, and 
and uh, they get they get back to the house, and everyone's like, oh, where's, you know, where's what's his name? And they're like, well, you know, shit happens. Um, Malcolm X character is amazing. He's such a drunk. I love it. <laughs> He's just like, where's the booze when he gets to the store? Yeah. But, you know, so it, they go through a little, like, a little bit of living. Girls are getting pregnant. Or, and then it comes across the other, the other pregnant the other pregnant woman, not Mallory, played by Sandra Bullock, the other one, where she's using the same system that they use to let her in. Like here, here, put this, uh, put this blanket up behind you across the lamps, you know, so you know, so we don't see out there. Da da da. Are you okay? And then they pretty much they let him in. Yeah. And they this random guy. They let this random guy in, who's it looks like he's wearing a suit. Mm-hmm. You know, so they, you know, looks can be deceiving. So they think he's a good guy, and they let him in. And there's something off about him from the minute. Like, you know there's something. He cowers really weird and is, like, laughing a little bit. You can tell there's something freaking wrong with him. And they just, they get to this, you know, they get to this point where they're fighting with Mal Elkovic's character. And he grabs a shotgun, and he's like, he's like, it was so nice of you to stop by. So nice to meet you. Get out. You know, da 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 da, and he's like, every time we let a stranger in, somebody dies. So, uh, what the old the old woman smashes Malkovich in the back of the head with a vase, I think it was, and they lock him in the garage. And this is kind of the beginning of the downfall. Yeah, Why this don't is we kind go of into like uh, yeah, some of our likes and dislikes. You know, and then shit breaks loose. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked. Oh God, I I actually like I th- I thought I actually thought I actually thought the movie was paced well. Mm. I did, I I actually I liked the back and forth thing they gave you. I wouldn't have liked it if it if it just went straight introduction part to straight river part. I thought that would have been on the river for the second half of the movie would have been stupid. Yeah. But I think they did enough of the river and enough of the stuff that happens in the river versus you know. Versus what they, you know, versus, you know, the backstory. And they didn't go too deep into people's backstory. I think they could have went a lot deeper and wasted more time in the movie. So I was interested, mostly interested the entire movie. That and I love the ending. It seems like the the time that they were on the river, it wasn't like every two hours. It was like large chunks of time. Yeah, it was like 24. It was like the, it went from like 4 to 16 to 24 to like 48 hours on the river and you know, so it was, it was really, and the whole time I was like, you know, where the hell's Tom? And then we get to the end. Yeah. When it's them on the river, it's literally just Mallory and girl and boy. Mm-hmm. That's it. So, and so I was like. kind of know that, that no knew... one else makes it, but you, it's not like a cemented thing, but like, if you know these kinds of movies, you kind of know where it's headed. Yeah. Oh, and the, <clears throat> why wouldn't they just take the car? MGK, this who's some like therapist guy, played by Machine Gun Kelly, and this uh, cop, this the trainee, yeah, the one, the woman who's in the police academy. He actually has a very funny line. He goes, "You're in the academy. It's not like you're a real cop." Oh. They literally they take the car out of nowhere. They grab the keys and they sneak off. You know, there's a really funny scene where Sandra Bullock catches him doing doing it in the laundry room. <laughs> I couldn't see what was happening the first time I watched it. Oh yeah. But he... I had a feeling because she was just like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Like those, I know that there's something happening there. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I I I did like the uh, I did like the I I wasn't gonna take the easy lay up of the cast, but the cast is amazing. The cast is so good, and I'll be honest, I expected a lot better movie. For such a good cast, I I don't know. Like, what did you like? What did I? I love John Malkovich. John Malkovich is awesome. Um, so good. So good. I I know that uh, this pissed off a lot of people, but I liked that you never clearly saw what the entity was that was like causing all these hallucinations or neurological mm-hmm. phenomena. I enjoyed that because. Well, you know. Well, you kind of do, though. Because the crazy guy that they let in that ends up getting everybody killed in the house, he draws them. 
I, he had all those drawings Yeah, but out. do you know if that's really what it is or what his interpretation? And, and that's why I, I do. I agree with you. I like the fact that you never see what it is because it's probably different for everybody. Like, his looked like a lot of tentacles and, like, a lot of old ones. Mm -hmm. well, to lovely. me, at least, from and what I, I could make out. Because they were, like, very blown out, like, charcoal drawings, which were cool. It's like a uh, Rorsch... What kind of test is that? Rorschach? He, Rorschach, thank you. I almost said radio, radio Shack. Radio, it was like a Radio Shack test. <laughs> it's a Radio Shack test. Um, um, what did I not like? <sighs> oh, you go first. I just, I gotta pick something. I didn't like how forced the whole motherhood bond thing was. That's, yeah. I don't, it just wasn't that believable to me. I don't know. Like, obviously she felt something for the kids or she wouldn't have done all of this stuff. It wasn't like a huge revelation at the end when she gave them names. It's just, maybe she realized that was all she had left now that Tom was gone. Because unfortunately, he does sacrifice himself for her and the kids. Which I hated. And I don't think that that was a major push. I don't know. It just, it didn't seem organic to me, I guess. It seemed like she didn't really solidify the bond until she thought they were going to survive. Yeah. Because I think in her head, she knew they would die first. And she didn't want to have such a close bond to them because every time she's gotten close to somebody, they've left. Mm -hmm. Their father. Baby daddy. Baby, baby daddy. Sister dies on her. Tom sacrifices himself for her. Uh, one thing I did love, did love, 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 is my man Tom, when it start when the thing starts taking him over and he completely fights it off enough to protect them. Yeah. Enough to shoot the one last guy who was played by uh, the guy from Ant-Man. The uh, the crew of thieves they, they, they have, they have like, you know, T.I. and the Hispanic guy. The weird Euro European, European guy, he was one of the crazy people oh. driving around. So, I liked, one one thing I did like is that the criminally insane were the ones who were not, I wouldn't say they were immune to it, because they still saw all the stuff, but it seemed like they were controlled by it. And they were like, because you don't, you don't really know. You don't, you don't know that if it's the entity controlling them, telling them to do this, or if it's they really just see this awesome thing and they really want everybody to see it too. And in just their crazy mind, they're like, you need to see this, you need to see this, clawing off their blindfolds and stuff. So, you, I mean, you never really know. I loved, like you did, I love the fact that there, that there isn't, there isn't a lot of finality in this. Because, like, even when they get to the end and they get to the school for the blind and they get to the, you know, they get to the guy from Constantine's waiting for him there. So I loved seeing him. You don't know if, because they, because they said, because, you know, the blind people are going to be okay because yeah. they can't see it. And they're like, oh, the birds give us enough, enough warning for the sighted people. But you don't, but how much food do they have? What's their sustainable food source? And what's they, to say it's ever going to end? They're just going to live in fear. And mm -hmm. hope that the birds are still going to be able to protect them in a way. What happens when all the birds are gone? What happens in the winter when the birds fly south? They're not going to let the birds fly. They're in California. Where the hell are the birds going to go? Who knows? I don't know. Mexico. That, that part really got to me. Just because the whole time I was watching the movie, the shots where she's wearing the blindfold, that's really not that far off from how I see. So that was like kind of really upsetting for me in particular because that is a really reality that I live right now mm -hmm. um, I had another hemorrhage on Christmas Eve so my vision's really bad and the second that they went into the school and I kind of got a hint of what was happening when she's staring at a plaque that I can't read I'm like that says something profound and then I noticed how the guy was walking and just his gait with his arm, with his, kinda, not with his hands by his sides, with really. His arms out, and that's how I have to navigate, and how he was turning to the sounds of voices. 
I'm mm -hmm. like, he's blind. And then I saw the person with the cane and the guide dog, and it just like, that sucks a lot. Like, that really, really, really hit me. And yay, we get to survive, but like, being blind is possibly the worst thing in the world. You can swap out any other sense. You can't replace this one. It just sucked. And like, and the one, the one thing that you didn't see, it, it's visually, when I it came to the end, it was so much easier for me to come to that conclusion, because the guy Kevin, I think that was named Kevin, Rick. no Rick, Rick at the at the end, I think his name was Kevin and Con Constantine. Rick, this blind man at the end of it, that's obviously you know like runs the school for the blind or is one of the prop prop proprietors of it. Um, they have like they have obviously like the special contacts and they give them like the cloudy eyes. I was able to immediately see that. I'm like, oh yeah, this dude's blind. And I was immediately able to see the school for the blind plaque. So I was able to immediately deduce that before we got to the other scenes and stuff like that. The one thing we both noticed actually as a goof up in this movie is the one scene where she's unloading this shot the sh uh, the shotgun their empty shells are hitting them the yeah the ground the first time and, i heard it i'm like those are empty and that's immediately what i did growing up hunting and you know with shot with shotguns i know the, the distinctive sound between a full and an empty shell and and you know they were dummy shells you know the ones that aren't full of anything and don't really have um, anything inside of them so I looked it up because I was very interested like was that to say like he laid loaded it with empty shells on purpose because they really want to hurt anybody but no that wasn't it it was just, just the fact that you know they didn't want to have live rounds in that god forbid something happens um, they didn't want to have live live rounds in there so it was empty shells but they forgot to replace out the audio for real shells hitting so I thought that was funny but um, it was just I, I, I don't know. I don't think this is a good movie. It wasn't that great. Like I'll tell people to watch. Like this is something. This is something. Watch it once. Look at all the hoopla. Some people. Some other people might get more uh, out of it. For for me, it's. I don't know. For me, it's not that good of a movie, and it created the dumbest social media movement. Do not do the bird box challenge. Don't walk down. On, don't walk through Times Square with a blindfold. You're going to get killed. You know, you're going to get hit by a car. And that poor person has to live with the fact that they hit some idiot doing an internet challenge. Don't do it. It's, you know, being visually impaired is not, it's not funny. It's not cool. It's not some fad you can do. You, you know, it's, there. there's real people like my wife that have to deal with this shit every day. It's not funny to walk around with like a blindfold and be like, hey, I can pretend that I'm blind. Like, it's, it's, it's not funny. It's actually offensive to people who actually have to live with it. A close friend of mine from high school, Liz, she's completely blind since uh, a while now uh, because of diabetes. I and if you're listening to this, Liz, hello, we love you so much. We love you, Liz. You know, and it's like you know, it's it's you know, I worked with the blind with uh, the blind council in the area that we worked with through my previous job. And, you know, and, and I learned, I learned a lot. I learned that they put, uh, they put these, uh, beeps in traffic. And like, when you hit like the walk thing, when you go to across, the reason why it beeps is the amount of beeps is to tell you how long you have until that, until that, until that light turns green or until it's not time to walk. And if like you're, the speed of the beeps. Yeah. If you're really interested um, learning what it's like to be visually impaired. Shane Dawson does have a really good series featuring Molly Burke, who is a pretty well-known, very well-known blind YouTuber who has some incredible content. And she really does go in depth about losing her sight, what it's like trying to kind of give Shane and his friends like a really thorough education about you know, the things you have to do and how accessibility works and what, you know, what the day-to-day -day is like. And she had the goggles that showed different different types of, like, you know, this, this person has cataract in both eyes. This person had glaucoma in both eyes. This person had a cataract in one eye, but is 
visually fine in the other and it was like she had like those goggles for them to try to just to like kind of experience it which i can only imagine what you go through it's you know it's hard i know well, yeah i mean i've gone i've grown so accustomed to this that we were uh we were at like a winter fair thing and i was walking with her and it was dark and it was it, you know it wasn't easy to see so she was walking and she had she had my arm and i kept telling her the you know like small step up hey there's a uneven floor here hey there's this and it was it's second nature to me now so i guess i was your sandra bullock yeah and you were girl <laughs> meet your dad boy no it's gross weird. also just because someone doesn't look blind doesn't mean that they're not blind yeah there's a that stereotype with dark glasses and canes and that's not always the case so. Yeah, because not 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 every visually impaired person just sees complete darkness. Yeah, there's a very there's small a percentage, huge scale of visually Im Im impaired, where some people it's you know some people see straight fog, some people see like you're trying to look through a waterfall. Some people don't see the middle; they just see the outside. What is that called? Macular degeneration. She's so smart. I, I work in the medical field. <laughs> but anyways, um, but so ra ratings, how would you rate what what would you give the bird box? I would give it like a two out of five just because the cast was awesome. And um, I mean, there were cool aspects of the story that I did enjoy. It's just, I don't know. It could have been executed a lot better. I feel like they kind of wasted the talent a tiny bit. And if you don't agree with my opinion, that's totally fine, too. I give it a 2.5. I do not know for sure, but I would be willing to bet that this director has done foreign films before. Because it had a foreign drama feel to it. This is a drama movie that has a slight horror sci-fi twist. It is not a horror sci-fi <laughs> movie that has a little bit of drama. In it. This is supposed to tug at your heart heartstrings, make you feel emotional, you know, Tom sacrificed himself and he took the necklace and the that had so that, much meaning to yeah. him and put it in her hand and said, I'll love you forever. When you people know. are <coughs> about to kill themselves, they just look horrifically sad or scared. Because I think it's because they see somebody, a loved one that has died. Or it's something like their worst nightmare. Which that, that is a, I did enjoy that aspect of it. Not that I like people to be in pain, but it's the pain that drives them to do it. Like mm -hmm. that's scary. That is a mind screw. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 2.5 out of, out of five. It's not a bad movie, but it be warned. It's not a horror movie. It is a drama movie with a little sci-fi slash horror twist to it. I mean, you don't really get any good kills in it, except for, like, the woman stabbing herself in the Malkovich. neck. Malkovich. Malkovich. He gets scissored in the chest. Yes. And as he's Malkovich dying... Malkovich doesn't kill himself. Gary's leaning over him going, I'm so sorry you didn't get to see, and just like, ka 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 And, like, Malkovich redeemed himself, like, a much yeah, of did. an asshole as he is. Even the one scene where he has the monologue where there's assholes, and then and there's, there's people, people that die. die. And he decided that he didn't want to be an asshole anymore and help out. Which, and then he ended up getting killed. Yeah, which kind of proves his point. It does. But... I related so deeply to his character. I think his char character... I think the one good thing that this movie actually did was show that in an apocalypse setting, there's going to be different kinds of people. There's going to be your Malkovich. There's going to be your NGK and the cop chick who only think for themselves and screw everybody else over. By doing it, there's going to be your person that's too trusting, like the other, like Olivia. the other person, Olivia. There's going to be your, um, there's going to be your super. I'm going to try to save everybody and be brave, like Tom. There's going to be your reluctant uh, hero. Yeah, you're going to be your reluctant hero, like you know our grocery store clerk. So sad that he died. And then there's going to be Cyrus the virus. I wish that character would have been in this. I mean, it's so good. He's like, That's all I see when I see John Malkovich. Breath. That's all. Oh. He would be the one trying to rip everyone's blindfold uh -huh. off. 
Yeah, because, oh, that's the other, other thing, is that there's apparently a mental ward nearby. That's where all these crazy people have come from, from some type of asylum, and they got out, and they're tearing the streets in Mercedes Benz and shit. Well, why not? Like, As you do. Fuck you it. know. You know. End of the world. So, thanks for watching. You know, thanks for, you know, stopping by our... I know everybody everybody's done reviews on this movie, but I think we had a very unique spin on it, because... I had to read everything to her that pops up on the screen, which didn't wasn't really that important, but gave a good like timeline as to how long they were on the river for, and I read the plaque for her and stuff like that. And told me what was up with people's eyes. Yeah, and the eye, and the eye thing. So that that did that did kind of help, but I just you know, I didn't go into I didn't go into this movie expecting much because I got a real, lot of mixed reviews from people, and I'm like you know right right in the middle about it. You know, I I don't think I'd watch it again, but you know, I didn't hate the movie. Yeah. I've definitely watched worse movies with yeah. you. <laughs> Red Christmas. So um, we found this movie on Netflix as it is a Netflix exclusive. Yeah, Netflix original. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like the only place you can find it. There is obviously no physical copy. So either get Netflix or get somebody's password watch the movie give it a chance you know you may like it if you like drama heart build it's like a hallmark horror movie it yes is a hallmark it is a hallmark uh... horror movie yes that is exactly what this is I'm gonna go trademark that okay. hallmark let's make some horror movies no so all right tell the kids where to find you so if you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel i'd love to have you put it right about here okay um, like the video if you did like the video. Leave us a comment with your thoughts. How did you feel about Bird Box? Did you kind of get the same feelings? Did you want to see what the monster was? Were you cool not really knowing? Were you cool with the ending? That's kind of like the most unhappy happy ending, I suppose. Also, don't forget to ring the bell for all notifications of my further uploads and live streams. You can also find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews and Instagram and Twitter at Reanimator. My solo and reviews with the groom are available via podcast through the Farsighted Network on iTunes. Also, please do check out their page on Facebook. That is the Farsighted Network. You can find me on Twitter under Repeat Groom Ray. And you can find me on Twitch under Repeat Ray Animator. Come find me. Subscribe, like, watch the videos, watch the live streams. We always have fun. So... We forgot to talk about the title of the movie, Bird Box. It's because there's literally carrying a box of birds. There's a of box birds. of birds. And our cat walked through the living room and he's like, we should make a movie called Cat Box. And I was like, that sounds like Poop. shit. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks guys for watching and we'll see you all next time. Bye.